<laughs> Namaste friends, welcome to my channel. I'm here hanging out with Desi. Oh yeah. And we're both wanting you to live your best life. More importantly, living a, your best pain-free life. And how you do that is through learning about your body, through what I sometimes refer to as applied yoga anatomy, or also experiential anatomy, that you really start to have a better understanding of what muscles are supporting you in your body. And once we get those muscles activated and working properly, we can actually get rid of pain and start to live a more productive life. Please remember to hit the subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so that you can receive notifications when I release amazing new practices. I hope you one day come and join me also at Blue Osa. And most importantly, happy practicing. Enjoy this offering that we're about to give you. Namaste friends, welcome to this morning practice. So many people want to do something in the mornings when they wake up because they often feel in pain or a little stiff. So pain and stiffness is always a result of muscle tightness. And muscle tightness is always the result of instability in the body. The body feels unstable, so it tightens up, it stiffens up. And you know, I used to do a lot of yoga in the morning I used to meaning I used to stretch a lot and try and like work out those kinks by like taking my arm over the head, stretching my shoulder girdle and stretching my back. And you know what? Every single time I did that, I always ended up with more pain in the mornings when I woke up. And then I would rinse, repeat and cycle again and stretch it out, wake up the next morning even in more pain. So what we really need to do is engage the muscles of the body. So I'm gonna take you through a very short and easy and simple program just to kind of start working out A, the kinks, but also more importantly, to activate the key muscles in your body so that you can start to go and do whatever you're gonna do, whether it's working or running or walking or going to the grocery store and <laughs> store and buying some groceries for the day. Whatever you're going to do, this program will set you up properly. And it's just such a wonderful and easy morning routine. So where we're going to start is coming into actually one of my favorite poses, which is called Sphinx pose or supported Cobra pose, Bhujangasana. And you just simply bring your elbows underneath your shoulders. You have your uh, legs out. I normally teach people not to do passive poses. And then you probably are thinking, but Yogi Aaron, this is a passive pose. And that's very true. We're supporting the body in one pose for an extended period of time. One of the rules in a yama is if we're going to do a passive pose, do it at the very beginning. Now, even though this is a passive pose, it's such a great pose to do because we're starting to retrain the lower back the, or the curve in the lower back, if you will. The lumbar spine is supposed to have this kind of C curve. So many fitness teachers and yoga teachers give a lot of cues that actually take that curve away and it's not good. The spine is supposed to have that curve. What it's also supposed to have is muscles that support that curve. So we're gonna, first of all, start to rewire the brain a little bit by just kind of hanging out in this pose for a couple of minutes, breathing, and then we're going to do some postures to make sure that the muscles that are stabilizing that curve are actually activated and working. But Yogi Aaron, what are some of those muscles? <laughs> well, some of those muscles are the psoas, the psoas major to be more specific. And when we look at the psoas major, what we actually start to see is that the psoas major is one of the key postures, or sorry, key muscles to support that lordotic curve. And unfortunately, in a lot of yoga, quote unquote, postures and stretching techniques, 
is actually abusing the psoas major and forcing it to shut down so that it's no longer supporting that lordotic curve. So we want to intelligently begin to activate that muscle, make sure that it's working. We also want to make sure that some of the other muscles in the hip flexors and hip extensors and back extensors are also activated. And yes, we're going to do this all in a short 15 minute ritual. Okay, so let's just take another minute or so here. I'd like you to, if you haven't already, begin to close your eyes and just feel like you're breathing into your lumbar spine. Feel like you're breathing into the base of your spine or the base of your lower back. And if you're not relaxed enough, just kind of shake your glutes a little bit or wiggle your glutes. Just to remind yourself to let go. Don't force this posture. So I don't want you to kind of arch up more. I just want you just to kind of hang out here and breathe in and breathe out. As you're breathing in and breathing out, be reminded as well that this particular posture is golden for helping to heal herniated discs. If you have any kind of sciatic pain, this pose is golden because what you come out of this pose, it starts to create this kind of vacuum effect, if you will, in the spine where it starts to actually pull the disc material back into the spine where it's supposed to be. One of the ways that we actually start to heal the spine is through, or any kind of spine issues specifically, is through spinal extension. Wonderful poses to begin to heal the spine. So let's just take another couple of breaths here. Inhale deeply and exhale deeply. And then we're gonna just slowly come down and rest for a short moment in crocodile pose. Take your forearms, stack them on top of each other, and then begin to rest your forehead on the forearm. Breathe completely into your belly and exhale out. Very nice. Inhale deeply, exhale. Now bring your hands down beside you. We're gonna do one of my favorite poses, especially after doing Sphinx pose, which is Superman pose or Shalabhasana. So lift the legs up a little bit and lift the chest up. You should start to feel the lower back muscles engaging here, specifically the long gesimus. Exhale, come on back down. Lift back up, lift the legs. Now keep the legs as straight as possible. Lift the chest up and feel with your hands those lower back muscles engage. Now lower the chest a little bit and lift the legs up higher. You're gonna feel those muscles really engage more, specifically the long gestimus. Come on back down. And then come on back up. The long gestimus is so so important for stabilizing the lower back, stabilizing the joints of your vertebrae. One of the worst things that we do, exhale, come on back down. Inhale, come on up. And by stretching these lower back muscles, we actually disable them and shut them down and they're no longer supporting the joints of your spine. Come on back down. Inhale, come on back up. Very nice. Now I'm bringing the arms out like Superman here, pretending I am Superman. I am a Superman. <laughs> you can also be a Superwoman, by the way. And then come on back down. And then come on back up. So if you wanna be a Superwoman today, that's fantastic. Lift the legs up a little bit more. Lower the chest, lift the legs up a little bit more. Lift up and then come on down. 
<sighs> yum, yum, yum. Lift it up. Very good. Now you might notice that every time we do this, it gets a little bit easier. However, if you're new to this, sometimes it takes about two or three different days of doing this to really start to get those muscles working and then come on down. We're gonna do it one more time. Come on back up. Very good. Lift up a little bit more, lower the chest, lift the legs up. Lift the chest up now, and then come on down, come back into crocodile pose. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Very nice, okay. So from here, come on to your back. <clears throat> and once you're on your back, just bend your knees like you would for bridge pose, which we're gonna be doing in just a moment. You're gonna bring your knees up, bring your hands to the base of just where the kneecap is. So the heel of your hand there. And then press the knees or the kneecaps into the heel of your hand. Keep the arms straight. Now you're not pushing with your hands. You're just keeping your hands there as a block and then exhale, come on down. Take a breath in and out. And then bring the knees back up. Push the knees into the hands, holding there for three, four, five, six. Bring the feet back down. Very nice. Bring the knees back up. And then come on back down. Very good. This is to start activating all of the hip flexors. This is one of my poses that I like to do just as a general sort of hip flexor activation. Now, if we want to get into the hip flexors individually, we need to start breaking them down. Come on back down. And then do it again. One of the main hip flexors is a muscle called the rectus femoris which is also one of the four quads. And then come on back down. And then do it again. Now you probably are gonna feel your lower abs also activate, which is why I also like this pose, because it also activates the rectus abdominis, which is also known as the eight pack, or sometimes six pack, but it's really eight. And then come on back down. Let's do it one more time, bring the knees up. Press the knees into the heel of your hands. Nice. Press, press, press. Turn the corners of your mouth upwards. <laughs> and then come on back down. Straighten the legs. Now, I'm gonna do this next pose with both legs, but you're welcome to do it just one leg at a time, okay? Bring the arms out to the sides. <clears throat> now, lift the legs up about one or two inches and then very slowly start to pull the knees into the chest as much as you can. Try not to lift the lower back so much off the floor and then bring the legs back out, straighten the legs and keep the legs about six inches, two inches off the ground and really firm your thighs. So feel the thighs engage and then very slowly Start to pull the knees back into the chest. Again, if this is too challenging for you or it's hurting some part of your body because pain is always the check engine light indicator of your body, then just use one leg at a time and then start to straighten the legs, bring the legs back out. Again, firm the thighs. If you're not sure if you're firming your thighs, feel them with your hands and then slowly start to Bring the knees back into your chest. Oh, I have Destiny here joining me today, my yoga dog. She loves hanging out with her daddy. And then slowly bring the legs back out. Okay, again, the legs are about eh, two to six inches off the ground. Firm the thighs as much as you can. Push through the heels of your feet and then slowly start to bring the knees back into your chest, 
pull the knees in. There you go. You should start to feel a lot of areas of your lower abs, your thighs working here. Slowly start to bring the legs back out. Very good. Firm the thighs as much as you can and then bring the knees back in. Very nice. And we're going to do it two more times. Bring the legs out. Again, hovering over the floor two to six inches. Firm the thighs, push through the heels of the feet, and then slowly start to bring the knees back in. Very good. And then one more time. Bring the legs out. Now firm your abs, push your navel down into your spine and firm the thighs as much as you can. Very good. And then slowly bring the knees in, pull them in, pull them in, pull them in, pull them in, and then let the feet come back down. Oh, yum, yum, yum. So this, by the way, as I'm filming this today, this is actually, I just woke up a little while ago and I actually wanted to do this with you as my first kind of practice for the day. It's just such a great practice. So wonderful to wake up the muscles, to reconnect them to the brain. And so when the brain senses instability, it actually knows which muscles that should be contracting because it's connected to them. We're always looking at refortifying that brain to muscle connection. Let's do our last pose, one of my favorites called bridge pose. Bring the feet about hip distance apart and then just a little bit wider so the heels are on the outside of the hips. Bring your arms to the sides or over your head and then lift the hips up. Now, as you lift your hips up, push down in the heels of your feet, lift the toes just a little bit so that you're more in the heels of your feet. You're gonna squeeze the glutes as much as you can and then slowly come on back down. Inhale, exhale, lift back up. Push down through the heels of the feet. Very nice, squeeze the glutes and then come on back down. Now this time I want you to squeeze your glutes and then start to lift up. See if there's a little bit of a difference there. Lift the toes a little bit. Press down in the backs of the heels. Now lift up a little bit more and a little bit more and then slowly come on down. Just squeezing the glutes give you a little bit more of a hip extension, a little bit more lift. And then slowly come on back up. Remember to squeeze the glutes, push down into the heels of the feet. If you want a little bit of hamstring here, pull the heels towards your shoulders. You're not moving the feet, you're just pulling the heels. You're gonna feel this in the hamstring, lift a little bit higher and then come on back down. Inhale deeply, exhale deeply. Very nice, now push down into the heels of your feet and slowly start to lift up. Nice. Can you lift up a little bit more? Lift the toes so you're not coming into the fronts of your feet. And then slowly come on down. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Good, squeeze the glutes. We're gonna do this one more time. Lift up. Squeezing the glutes, lift up as high as you can now. Very good. Very nice. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Lift up a little bit more. And then come on down. Ah, oh, que rico. Oh my goodness. Well, you're welcome to stay here as long as you like and just rest in Shavasana you're actually ready to get up and get on with your day. It's always invaluable to just kind of take a couple of deep breaths. And if you want to join me in doing that, you just rest your hands on your lower belly. You can even interlace the fingers and just have them rest there too. Kind of creating a little bit of pressure. 
and take a few deep breaths into your hands and feel the rising and the descending of your navel center. Again, stay there as long as you like. And when you're ready, move out into your day with excellence. Namaste, friends.